Okay, Josephine. You are live. Thank you. Well, um, a warm welcome to all our, our Year 10 parents this evening, and thank you for joining us in these very strange ways. Not quite the way that we at the John Rowan School are used to doing our parent information sessions, but um, I hope it works. I hope it works for you. Um, so we have had a really lovely day today, haven't we, Mr Duncan? We've welcomed back our Year 10 students to the school, the beginning of Key Stage 4. It's been a delight to see them, they've all grown, um, to hear their voices in the playground, to see them along the corridors and to, to welcome them back after what's been an extraordinarily long period of time since we last saw them. Um, I hope that they will have gone back to talk to you today and to, to tell you about the amount of planning and preparation that we've done although I imagine they haven't told you about the planning and preparation that, that we've done. But what I expect they will have told you is about all the new rules. They're only allowed up one staircase, they can only do this, they've got to do that in this particular way. And it's because of all of those changes that we've put in place that we thought it would be really useful tonight to take you through some of the things that we have done to try and make the school as safe as we possibly can for your children to come back and do what is the most important thing for them, which is get back into the classrooms and start learning with their teachers again. So today we've done an induction for the children. Over the last few days, we've been doing inductions for staff. We are still learning and we are still trying to get it right. And we know that over the next few days, we are likely to change some of the things in order to make them work once we've got all the children back in. But we thought it would be useful to let you know our thinking around things and to um, help you to talk with your child about some of the things that they might be asking. So in a minute I'm going to pass you over to my colleagues. But, but just a quick observation from me, which is that I haven't quite realised until this week how little I personally have had to wear a mask over the last few months. I've, managed to avoid going to Tesco's too often. I've managed to avoid situations where I've needed a mask. I've been at home a lot. I've been in here where the building has been pretty empty and um, there hasn't been a need. And that I think is the same for many of our staff and it certainly seemed to be the same for our students. And what we noticed today was we had some students who were very, very good at putting their mask on when they needed to put their mask on at taking it off and putting it in its little bag safely when they didn't need it on and getting all of those things right. But there were children who were getting it wrong and needed constant reminders and were asking us why. Why is that important? So I think that is worth a few minutes of my time. So we are asking the children to wear masks when they are moving around the building. So at times when they're not stationary and where there's more chance of transmission and getting closer to people than we would normally like. So where social distancing isn't possible. The children and the adults in the school community are all wearing masks at these times. When they're out in the playground, they can choose to take their mask off. When they're in the classroom, we want them please to take their masks off. They will all be sitting down facing the front. The teacher needs to communicate with them, so they will take their mask off. We need the children to communicate with us. We need them really to take their masks off in the classroom. And that's particularly important because actually our teachers will not be able to move around the classroom because they need to maintain good social distance at all time. So we want the children to wear those masks at that time, but there is no point in wearing masks if they don't wear them properly. So we don't wear them hanging off our ears. We don't wear them cradling our chins. And we don't wear them with our noses poking out over the top or as hats even. So wearing a mask is important for health and safety reasons. They're not fashion accessories and they're just something that we're going to have to get on with over the next few months, I'm afraid. So your support of the work that we're doing to keep us all safe in this way would be much appreciated. What we do ask is that the children have a little plastic bag so that when they take their mask off, they can put it in that bag and then into their pocket where it will be kept clean. 
Um, what we also say to them is please try and avoid touching the mask too often and please make sure that you treat it in the best possible way, washing it regularly or changing it if they're disposable, making sure that you're not dropping it on the floor and leaving it lying around because it's dirty then and it is no use. So a few basics around masks was a big learning point for me this week. Um, I think we've got the social distancing in our heads, but we're not always very good at it. And again, we're needing to constantly remind both adults and children about keeping that distance it is so important. So Mr Thomas, Mr Duncan are going to be talking to you about the measures we're putting in place, but actually critically also about the academic standards that we want to uphold whilst we are putting those measures in place and the drive and the ambition we've got for your children. There is a facility for you to have your say and to ask us questions tonight. There's a little Q&A button on the side of your screen that you can tap in questions and I'm just about to retreat to my desk behind these screens and whilst my colleagues are talking they are going you can ask those questions and I will be looking at them, publishing them, answering those I can and then when you guys have finished talking I'm going to return and ask you lots of the questions that parents are asking and hopefully that will be the best way possible of addressing the many hundreds of questions that parents have got. So Luke, Mr Thomas, Director of Raising Standards for years 9, 10 and 11, I'm going to pass to you first of all. Thank you. Mr uh, Duncan, can you please move across in front of the screen now, please? Maybe. No, you need to take your chair. Much better, thank you. Um, good evening all and um, welcome to the year 10 um, presentation. Um, I'm going to go through it in two ways. Firstly, I'm going to speak about the academic side, our expectations and vision moving forward, and also um, then focus on the health and safety aspects in regards to how we will keep your child safe and um, do our best, obviously, keep the school um, open so that your children are able to come to school to be educated. Um, Now I'd like to start off by talking in, um, to you about the iceberg illusion, which I discussed this morning in the assembly I had with the attends. Um, what we often see is the success or the end product. What we don't often see or realize is what goes on behind the scenes, all the sacrifices that have had to be made, the dedication, the hard work, the failures, the persistence. You know, the, the tenacity that has uh, had to go into it, some of which have taken years and years and years for that success um, to arrive. And it's, it's important for um, your children as well as yourselves to realize that success isn't something that's in, instantaneous. It doesn't all of a sudden fall into our lap um, and we are going to have to work hard for it, you know, because nothing worth having in life comes easy. The message I really want to get across here is that the only place you're going to find success before work is in the dictionary and hard work must go in before we end up um, being successful. We are going to end up failing at times, but there's nothing wrong with that. As far as I'm concerned, failing is the best thing. As long as you learn from your mistakes, you get up again and you go again, you know, you're, you're bound to do better um, than you did previously. Um, I'd like to draw, to draw your attention to the table I'm now displaying. Um, which show the attainment um, eight um, scores for the school over the last three years. What you'll see is in 2018, we averaged an attainment eight score of 36, which means that on average, students left the school with just below a grade four. In 2019, the attainment score went up um, to 40, which means that students left the school with, uh, on average, a grade four. And um, this year, 2020, um, the attainment eight score was just below 47, which meant that on average students left the score just below a grade five. So what we've seen is that over those three years, um, we've moved the attainment score um, by roughly 11, um, which is a very significant um, improvement um, in the school's attainment which shows that we are on that upward trajectory and we are moving um, in the right direction. A big, big part of that is the attendance of students to school. 
In 2018, the attendance was 89%. In 2019, it was 93%. And in 2020, it was 94%. So what we're clearly seeing there is as students, students' attendance to school is in, has, has improved, we then start to see that further improvement um, in their attainment. And there is so much data out there showing a very strong and positive correlation between students attending school and their end product in terms of their GCSEs and their grades. The bottom right hand figure is the attendance figure um, for your child as a year group at the start of lockdown um, earlier this year of 93.5%. You know, I was very, very honest with them. You know, it was the lowest attendance at that time in the school. But, and this is the really important thing, that's what happened last year. And it's all about moving forward. It's all about us working together. And it's all about obviously learning from any mistakes that were made last year. So not only do I expect that figure to be higher this year, I know it's going to be higher this year. Because in speaking to them as a year group this morning, it was very, very clear. They were very enthusiastic and they, they gave me the impression that they cared very much about their attendance to school and their learning. Mr. Duncan? Yeah, it was, um, just to follow on what Mr. Thomas was saying there, uh, it was fantastic to see you know a vast majority of our students in today. I believe there was only about four or five students who may not have been in today for various reasons. But it was great to see some of them with great energy asking questions about the GCSEs and you could really start to see that focus now, which is perfect. And again, like the, the, the graphic is showing, the more often that we're in school, the better our grades will be. So let's hope we can just continue as we've already started off. Thank you very much. Now, I just want to contextualise attendance just a little bit, because obviously what we are after in, in, in the perfect world is for each child to have 100 percent attendance. You know, that may not be possible at all times, but, you know, if we had everything going our way, that's what we would have. But let's just look at an attendance figure of 90%. Um, below 90% is what we consider to be a persistent absentee. If a child has an attendance figure of 90%, over that whole year, they've missed four weeks of school. Now, four weeks is a very, very, very significant amount of time to be missing from school and will definitely have a detrimental impact on that child's attainment. Um, an attendance figure of 80% is eight weeks or two months of school missing. Now, Children who miss that much school, you know, are very, very, very unlikely to leave with the required grades um, that they need to make that next step be an apprenticeship, be to go on to sixth form or, or college. You know, they're, they're somewhat hamstrung in being, being able to get the grades that they require. Even something like a 96% attendance, you know, that's that's pretty much a week and a half of school. That, that's been um, missed and it may have an impact. So what we're saying is we want students to be in school as often as possible and ideally at all times. What I will say, you know, as I said to my previous year groups is if they're a little bit under the weather, um, not related to COVID, I'll talk about COVID stuff separately, but I feel a little bit under the weather, please do send them in. We will keep an eye on them and if they deteriorate in a day or don't feel any better, then we will contact you and then um, send, send them home if necessary. Um, the screen should now be showing you what the price score is um, and the link between price score and progress. Although I'm only showing you the class of 2020 results, the same trend um, for progress and attainment, which I'll talk about on my other slide, um, is shown in 2019 and in 2018. So we've actually got um, three years of data showing this very, very strong correlation between pride score, the pride score students get and their final GCSEs. Um, the pride score is made up of, you know, attendance to school, punctuality to school and lessons, you know, and, and students' attitude to their learning as um, judged by their teachers, as well as um, the number of rewards that they get by the three main metrics that um, make up the pride score is attendance, punctuality and attitude to learning. And what we can see here is the higher your pride score, the more progress you make, the lower your pride score, the less progress you make. And just to contextualise that again, if you've got a target grade for your GCSEs of a grade five, if you've got a pride score of nine, then the likelihood is that you are going to achieve a grade at least above that. So you'd end up getting a grade six or higher. 
Um, and likewise, if you've got a pride score of a one, the likelihood is you're going and you've got a target grade of a five that you're going to um, attain um, a grade three or lower based on your pride score. There's a very, very, very strong correlation between the pride score your child gets or receives at the end of each term and the grade they end up getting as, the, as their GCSEs. And like I said, three years of data has shown that. Um, if I then move on to the attainment, you can see students with a pride score of, of nine leave on average with a grade seven across the board. And the lower the pride score, the less the um, number of higher grade that they end up leaving with. So someone with a pride score of one ends up leaving with on average um, a grade two across the board. So we want to ensure that the students' pride scores are high. And again, how we maintain that, how we achieve that is simply by being in school as often as possible because attendance is a metric. Get into school on time um, so they're not missing out on any learning first thing in the morning. Get into each of their lessons on time and then having that what I like to refer to as their, that positive attitude to their learning. And by that, I mean that when they get into a classroom, they're ready and they're focused. They've got all their equipment. They're not messing around. They're not being silly. They're not having to be given reminders by their teachers for them to focus and, and be ready um, for that learning to take place. So the higher the price score, the more progress students make, the higher their price score, the higher their GCSE grades. And there's no point waiting until year 11 before we start doing these things because it's about getting into those that work ethic and that routine now, you know, at the start of their official GCSEs so that when year 11 comes, they're not trying to play so much catch up and having to worry and, have, and being so much more anxious because they've done a lot more work in making those foundations this year. So next year, things are that bit much um, easier for them. You can go ahead. Yeah, exactly. That. I mean, the, uh Everything that the students have shown today, the way they've um, carried themselves through with all the new changes, it shows that everyone seems that they're in a good spirits, they're in positive frames of mind. The fact we're now into our GCSE years, I think is the, is the perfect moment. I can imagine a number of our guys at the same time as we're saying GCSEs, that they may be quite anxious and thinking, well, I've not been in school for a number of months. The luxury uh, that I, I like to think of ourselves as being in, we've just started year 10. So in, in my mind, we've not missed any of our GCSE content as yet. We start from scratch from today or tomorrow when our lessons officially start. And like what Mr Thomas has said, if we can get into those good habits from this year here, then when we get to year 11, everything should be nice and straightforward. Obviously, there is going to be a little bit of panic and a little bit of nerves. But if we can try and minimise as much as that's possible by doing all the right things that we can through this year, then when we come to year 11, we should be in the right zone of mind. Um, just sharing with you some of the GCSE um, progress data for students that have um, just left um, this year. Um, we can see, if I just go to um, Malik here at the top, um, he averaged three grades higher than his target grades, which is an absolutely fantastic achievement. And the progress of a number of students, some of which you may be familiar with on, on the screen, were, were phenomenal across the board. Um, my student of the year, and we had 210 students, 212 in year 11, um, what, what was Kelly Hepden. Um, for me, from where she's come to where she got to and to average nearly two grades higher than a target grade across the board was an absolutely fantastic achievement, one, one, of, one of which I know her parents were, were immensely proud of her. Um, what we've also got um, on, on display at present is a mixture, there's 50% boys and girls there, so it's not that one um, gender is outperforming the other. We've also got half of the, that, what I've got on the screen is um, people premium or, or students who are, um, have free school meals at school. And that just goes to show there's nothing preventing any student from achieving if they come to school as often as they possibly can and if they have that right attitude um, to their learning in the classroom. You know, we will, for those people who have any financial difficulties, we will try and support them as much as possible as we have continually done. So please don't let that be a reason for your child not achieving or striving to, to be the best that they possibly can while they are in school. Again, 
just to have a look at these are some of the um, selected students in terms of their actual GCSE grades, uh, a number of which have gone on to study at grammar schools and do the International Baccalaureate. Paradise has chosen to remain at the John Rowan School along with a number of our ex students. He's actually doing four A levels at present at the John Rowan um, as part of our sixth form. Um, and the message I want to get across here is these students, they had several choices in terms of the sixth form provision that they wanted to go to. They were able to do whatever courses that they wanted to do, and that's primarily because they got the grades that they needed. They had the entry criteria for all those establishments and for all those courses, and that's the position I want your child to be in next year once they've completed their, their GCSEs. I want it to be their choice about where they go, their choice about the courses that they take, rather than them not being able to go to this place because they haven't got the grades or not being able to do this course because they haven't got the grades. And again, I want to repeat this start now. It's about what we do at the start and getting those right routines going rather than waiting, OK, I'm not going to start doing it properly until year 11. You know, by then, more often than, than not, it's too late. Um, linking into um, the students is the message I wanted to get across to the year 10s this morning. It's all about them. They are going to be the ones that are in charge of their own destiny. They will determine the grades that they end up getting. Teachers are here to facilitate that and, you know, you know, I'm obviously not downplaying the role that teachers play. We do play an important one, but nonetheless, your child will be in charge of their destiny and it will be about their behaviour for learning. Is it a case that they arrive late to lessons? How often do they do their homework? You know, um, how dedicated are they towards their studies? And dedication isn't necessarily about spending five, six hours each evening, you know, going back over your work or reading. Dedication is about, OK, you know what? I've got homework to do today. The homework might be due on Friday, but I got the homework today. I'm going to make sure I get the homework completed today before I do anything else. It's not about waiting until the day before the homework is due before getting it. Um, dedication is, OK, you know what? I didn't quite understand this work today. I have my exercise book. I'm going to go home. I'm going to spend half an hour or so going back over the work we did today just to try and you know see if that can help me with my understanding. I'm going to look through my revision book to see if that can help me with my understanding. And if the child still doesn't get it, then they go and have a conversation with their teacher at the next lesson or at a convenient time, a mutually convenient time with the teacher. We will be more than happy to support all students, you know, be break time, be lunchtime, be after school, because at the end, end of the day, we want students to do that, do their best. And it's about reflection. It's about knowing, OK, where are my weak areas? Where do I need support? How can I get that support? And who do I go to for that support? Um, it's about not being afraid to put your hand up in the classroom. Sir, miss, I'm not quite sure about that bit of work. Can you please explain it again rather than lying to themselves and this this keeping quiet? Because as far as I'm concerned, teachers want to know whether your child has fully understood something. And yes, we do assess and do many assessments in, 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 in class, but sometimes with a class of 30, it's not always possible to get around and see everyone, particularly with the fact that we can't move around the classrooms as we have done previously. So it's, it's about your child being as honest as they possibly can in their lessons and just not being afraid, you know, to put their hand up. And it's about sacrifices. Sacrifices have to be made. If it's a case of, all right, you know what, I really want to play my computer game tonight, but you know what, I'm going to get my homework done first, or I'm going to do my work first, and then I'm going to play the computer game as a reward. I really want to watch that Netflix series that I'm so into right now, but no, I need to get their schoolwork complete first, and then that is a reward. It's about realizing that their education and schooling should be their priority, should be their number one priority in moving forward and not anything else um, externally. Um, the sixth form for the school, which obviously I mentioned this morning um, to your children, because um, I want them to start thinking about the next two years rather than just focus on, on this year. You know, at the end of the day, the GCSE grades they get is going to determine where they go in terms of which sixth form, which apprenticeship, you know, etc. Um, 
the sixth form results for the run roll um, in terms of the A start to B grades doubled this year. They doubled last year as well. So again, it's continuing that upward trend. And the great thing about it is 85% of our students this year were able to go off and do the course that they wanted to do at the sixth form place that they wanted to do it. And that's the really important thing. And, you know, they went off and did some absolutely fantastic courses, some of which you can see on the board um, at, you know, several Russell Group universities. The Russell Group universities are the 20 best universities in this country. And the, the big thing there that I want to get across again is if the fact that they were able to go to where they wanted to go to and do the courses that they wanted to do because they got the aim of results. And that's the message I want the year 10 to currently understand that in terms of the GCSEs, they're going to play a massive role in regards to where they go for their um, A levels. And just to my final message in regards to the sixth form, we're not the biggest sixth form, we're not the smallest, but I like to think that, you know, what we what we offer is a bit of a personal touch particularly for students from the drum round that move on into our sixth form. And by that, what I mean is that we know the students, we know them inside out, we know what their needs are, we're able to provide that personal support and um, guidance for them to enable them to transition from key stage four to key stage five, which is a lot more um, independent learning and independent work so that they are able to do the best that they possibly can in their A levels, so then make that next step. Um, moving on to the health and safety aspect, which for me um, is just as important, if not more important, at this current time um, than a student, um, you know, your child's education in this school, because we want them to stay safe. Um, we want obviously all staff members to also stay safe in this school, and by staying safe, they're able to, to continue. Um, attending school. So I'm just going to go through some of the key safety aspects that we've put in place um, that you, your child would have seen today and uh, as Miss Smith said may have mentioned, probably hasn't, but may have mentioned to you when they got home today. So your child is in a year group bubble and will remain in that year group bubble and by that what we mean is that the year groups will not mix. We have a staggered start to the day, a staggered end to the day. We have a staggered break and a staggered lunch. Only one year group has a lunch or break time at any one particular time. Your child has a floor that's been dedicated to the year group, which is the, the first floor um, at the John Ron School. I'll show you the map in a didn't change the map, I'll show you the map in a minute. Um, and teachers will be keeping themselves two metres away um, from your child within the classroom, which is all mapped out um, on, the, on the flooring, so they know where they can stand and where they where they shouldn't be. Um, the seating is all arranged in rows, so students are not facing each other and in so doing. Particles as they talk is, are not being transferred from one um, student to the other. And they have their own designated entry and exit from the building, um, which is just one in, in one area um, for the year 10s at the front of the school. They only come in or go out via, via those front doors, which are again very, very clearly labelled. In the mornings when they come for breakfast, there's, there are separate areas for each year group in the canteen, as well as them being able to eat their breakfast in the, in the playground as well. So it's really, really important that we obviously maintain these safety aspects and as Miss Smith has mentioned earlier, as well as the wearing of masks, sanitizing their hands every time they go into a classroom, every time they leave a classroom, which we have provided in each classroom. But if your child which wishes to bring their own to use, then obviously that's also very they're able to do that. And um I've just spoken about the lunch and break time area um, that's been designated um, for each year group. Just touched on this, we would usually always talk about equipment at the start of the year and how important it is. But this year it's even more important because students are not permitted to share equipment um, with others within their class. So your child, you need to ensure that they come to school 
with all of the current bits of equipment on the board. Um, don't worry about making notes about it. It is on the website or, and this video is being recorded and will be sent out. The big difference um, from previous years is that glue sticks are no longer going to be provided by teachers because that would cause cross contaminate cross that would cause cross contamination between year groups. So your child will need to have their own glue sticks um, with them in their pencil case on a day by day basis. They will obviously need to bring a bag that's big enough because yes, we're giving them exercise books again this year as we have in previous years, but they cannot be left in school. They would need to be taken home each each day and then brought back to school on the next occasion the child has that lesson. So again, this brings in a lot of organizational skill because it's important your child is able to organize themselves and have their bags packed. Ideally that night before, so they're not rushing around that morning in a bit of a panic, you know, where's my science book, where's my math book, because it would have been packed on the night before. And again, another big difference this year is the PE kit. When your child has PE on that day, they are permitted to wear their PE kit, the John Rowan PE kit, not what they determined to be a kit, but the John Rowan PE kit. Um, they can wear that for the day while they're in school. Um, if it's a wet day and it's rainy, contingency plans are going to be in place for them to be able to change out of those wet, sudden clothes rather than walking around in them all day. But it's important that they have that PE kit and they wear that PE kit on the day, um, again, to try and reduce the levels of contact and having to go to a confined area in the changing rooms and stuff like that. That's fair. Yeah. And one small point as well. So obviously there is quite a little bit more of equipment to be had and obviously it does need to stay within the bag. In the years gone past, we usually have had a locker. But unfortunately, our lockers are all downstairs on the year nine floor. So today was our last opportunity. Again, if anyone's forgotten, we can always speak with the facility, but our students cannot go back into their lockers, unfortunately, anymore. So if there is any issues, please um, get your student, sorry, get your child to come to speak to me so we can find that another arrangement for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I've spoken about the need for regular attendance to school and its importance because of the link with um, good progress and attainment. Um, I'm now going to go through the um, national guidelines that have been sent out to all schools by the DfE and Public Health England. Um, these are different scenarios that we've been given and this is the, the most important part of today as far as I'm concerned because it, the, the last thing that we would like is for a year group to be sent home or for the school to close because we have too many um, students infected or, or too many members of staff in, in infected. So it's really important that we follow these particular guidelines. Now, if your child has any coronavirus symptoms, I will come on to the symptoms on my next slide. You need to keep your child at home. That child needs to, needs to self isolate. You would need to contact the school's attendance officer and then arrange for a test to be carried out for, for that child. Um, the child is not able to come back to school unless the test comes back as being negative or 10 days have passed in terms of um, them being in isolation, right? So if the test comes back negative, they get positive, um, they don't come to school, they self isolate for 10 days. Um, and again, you've gone back to school to let us know um, when the test was carried out and the result of the test so that we can then know when the child is able to come back. Um, now the important thing here is if after those 10 days your child still has a cough or has still not had their taste of smell or um, sense of taste or sense of smell return, they can still come back to school after those 10 days because it can take a number of weeks in some instances for, for those um, for that cough to go or for the sense of smell and taste to return. But once those 10 days have passed, they are able to come back in the school. Now, if someone in your home has tested positive for coronavirus or has symptoms, um, the child cannot come to school. The parents need to contact um, the school to again inform us you would need to arrange testing for everyone else um, in that household and everyone should self isolate within that household. If the test comes back as being negative for that child, they can come in. 
However, if anyone in that household has been tested positive, then the, they will need to stay at home. The child will need to stay at home. Again, you would contact the school, um, school attendance office to let us know. Um, the self-isolation period this time is 14 days rather than the 10 days earlier if the child tests positive himself. So if the child tests positive, it's 10 days. If it's anyone else in the household that's tested positive, it's 14 days. And it's important to obviously differentiate between, between the two of them. Um, if the NHS test and trace has identified that your child um, or someone who they're in close contact with at home um, has having symptoms or confirmed coronavirus, again, it's the same thing. Child can't come to school. Um, you need to contact the school's attendance officer and it's a self-isolation for 14 days again. Only after those 14 days can your child come back into school. Um, if your child has come back from a holiday, and this is thinking about anyone who may go away at half term or, or Christmas to a country and that country ends up being on the quarantine list, then you may have booked a holiday and the country is absolutely safe right now. But as was the case for several people, after going away, you then find out, oh, the FCL have put, um, put the country on their quarantine list. After returning from that country, if you have returned after the designated period where the quarantine starts, then you will have to keep your child at home for 14 days. You will need to inform the school that they are quarantining and they can only return to school after those 14 days. If we end up in a local lockdown and it's usually going to be a borough wide lockdown if it's local. So if Greenwich as a local authority or borough undergoes a lockdown and you have a child who's vulnerable and needs the shield, you will receive a letter, a shielding letter from the local public health um, authority because your GP would have provided them with all that detail. Your child will then obviously be kept at home shielding. Work will be provided um, for your child um, during that shielding period of time. You must provide the shielding letter to the school so that the absence um, can be authorised. Um, but your child won't miss out on any part of their learning. That they won't be in school for the face-to-face. -face, but the online um, resources that we have, Seneca, Evelina, the Show My Homework, Microsoft Teams, um, your child will not miss out on the learning that is taking place in that school because it's important that they maintain their safety um, away from school and maintain that shielding. But again. That's a local lockdown scenario and you will receive a letter um, from the local public health authority if and when that scenario comes up. Um, I'd like to clarify some of the symptoms just to make sure we're very, very clear because we're nearly coming into the cold and flu season. We need to be able to differentiate as best as possible between them. If your child has a high temperature and you will know it's by touching their chest or back in it will be very hot to the touch. You, ne you don't necessarily have to have a thermometer for that. So if they've had a high temperature for, for a few hours or overnight, please keep them at home because that's obviously one of the symptoms of coronavirus. And then on the goal, the stuff we mentioned, contact the school, organize a test to be carried out. If they end up having a new continuous cough and a continuous cough is a cough, that lasts for more than an hour or you end up having three or more episodes of that coughing in a 24 hour period. That's a very strong symptom. You know, we don't usually cough that often when we have a cold or a flu. So that's a very strong symptom of um, COVID-19. So again, please keep them at home. Please come back to school. Please arrange for a COVID-19 test to be carried out. And if your child um, loses their sense of smell or sense of taste, again, please keep them at home. There are some other symptoms um, which you can find out on Public Health England's website, but these um, are the three big ones and the very, very clear ones for us to look out for and act upon if um, any of them um, show sight, if any of your children show signs of these symptoms. Um, because teachers are not able to walk around as often, um, we're not we're not actually able to take books in because the guidance is 
for us to take a booking, we would have to wait 48 hours before we can even touch the book, do the marking, and then wait 48 hours again before we can hand it back. So you are not going to see as much red pen um, being in your child's book. They they are still going to undergo assessments, you know, rest assured, and I'll come on to that in just a minute. But what you are going to see is a lot more green pen and a lot more purple pen for the self and peer assessment. A lot more of our assessments are going to be conducted online. There will be some in paper format, um, which we wouldn't usually hand back at the next lesson. Sometimes it will be over that week, so we have that time time period to get the work, to leave it to sanitize, and then obviously get the work returned to your child once it's marked. Now, I did mention, I have mentioned earlier, so we've 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 got Evelina um, software assessment software for English. We continue to use Hegarty Maths. Um, Seneca, which was primarily used for science last year, we've bought into the enhanced version this year, so that's going to be available across several um, other subjects for them to use. And there are, we still continue to use Shell My Homework. We're going to use Microsoft Teams much more. We've also got Microsoft Forms, which we'll use for a lot more of our online um, testing as we started to, to do last year. Um, we bought mini whiteboards um, along with the mini whiteboard pens and the mini whiteboard rubbers. Um, and we've given your child, I believe they got their, their one today from their form tutors. So they've all got their own personal one that they will take with them in their bags and take from lesson to lesson. Um, that, that way teachers are able to do very quick and very fast assessments in class to see and gauge understanding so that they can intervene. Because unfortunately, you know, which is a shame because I absolutely love to do it. You know, walk around the classroom and just have a look at what some of the children are writing rather than it just having to be a verbal thing in class. Um, so we are going to carry out a lot, a lot more we call mini plenaries um, in lessons to test understanding so that we're able to provide um, that support. Anything else you want to add here? No, that's a OK, so uh, at this point I'm going to hand over to Miss Smith, who has been collating all of your questions. Yeah, I've been a little bit busy at the back here trying to sort out questions. So um, actually, one of the first questions that came up, Luke, and I know you've covered it a little bit when you went through those two tables of symptoms is what about if my child's just got a cold? I mean, my feeling is I don't want them sneezing everywhere, but I'll let you answer. Yeah, so um, and this, this is obviously a difficulty as we come up to the cold sea, the, the season of cold, but what I would say is if it's just the cold and you're convinced it's just the cold, and I'd obviously rather they're in school, um, that continuous cough, that high temperature in particular, they're, they're the main symptoms to, to look out for. And most people seem to be getting um, one or more of those three symptoms. So it's that continuous cough. If it's not different to the coughing that you would have seen previously when your child has got a cold, then I'm happy for them. We are happy for them, I should say, to continue their education in school. Yeah, I would say snotty nose, send them in with loads of tissues. Yeah, yeah? definitely. Um, OK, so all of this is about us trying to do everything we can to keep both the adults and the children safe in the school, because the last thing any of us wants is the transmission of, of a virus. And, and we've already been hearing about schools where year groups have had to be sent home where departments have lost all their teachers and things like that so this is really really important it's not just a little rule about walk on the left because it's a bit nicer it's it's absolutely critical i think we all discovered over the last six months how important being at school is for children how important it is for them to to be with their friends to be in a classroom where they're learning from their friends where the teacher can read their body language and there are things that you can do online which are great, but I mean, we're saying this as teachers, nothing beats <laughs> being in the classroom with highly qualified teachers. So all of this is about trying to do the best. And, and I think that what I would say is we're not going to get it all the right all the time straight away, but we are going to try. So one of the questions is, but what about the library? The library in Westcombe Park is not on the right floor for year 10. So what are we going to do? Yeah, so um, this is already, plans already afoot to sort this out with the librarian, uh, Miss Allen. There are going to be pop-up libraries that appear on the first floor and obviously the ground floor as well. Notification will be sent to students in regards to when those pop-up events will be taking place so they will be able to um, access books 
and obviously continue to enjoy their reading because we know how important it is for children to read. Yeah, and then there's a little bit of reading that, that parents want to do. One parent was asking about where are the curriculum plans so I can look and see what my child is learning. So I was looking on the website to check they were there. If you go into the curriculum section of the website, you can drill down into the subject areas and the subject teachers have put their curriculum plans up. So if you are looking to carry on your engagement with your children's learning from what you were doing last term, then that's the place to go and have a look. Another question was uh, the start times are really complex. I get that. We're all kind of thinking, right, when are we going to start? We'll put them up on the website. I've just looked, they're not there. But on Thursday, we, tomorrow, we want you attending at 8.25. 8.25 and on Friday? 8.40. At 8.40. Good. Well done, Mr. Duncan. You got that one right. <laughs> I'm glad you got that. Um, <laughs> I looked it up. <laughs> And what about cycle racks? What if the children what if the children come to cycle in? Where, where where can they park their bikes? The the bike store just down the outside. So that would be good if they if, if there's a nice little um shelf bit that's on the outside. You can obviously bring your little bike lock in and it's then safely stored away. The teachers also share the same space there as well, but it's all nice and safe there. And we put some extra racks in there, but if those all get used up because more children are cycling, we have got some more in storage that we will we will bring out. Um, the PE kit thing was a question. Oh, do you want a question about bikes? Uh, there was a few questions about electric scooters as well. Oh, the nightmare electric scooters. Uh, Are they legal? No, we can answer that question. I think they're not only rented ones up, oh, so right, cool. no electric. Yeah. We're not having a legal property on yeah, the school site. Um, PE kit though, um, you said they can get changed, yeah. but that presupposes that they looked at the weather report and seeing that it's going to rain and therefore they're going to bring their kid. So it's it's not a perfect solution. We're trying to minimise the number of children in those incredibly small changing rooms. I would say if your child's got PE and you look on the weather report and there's rain possible, then they're going to need to bring in another bag with some clothes to change into, school uniform to change into. Um, we're going we're gonna to see how this goes, aren't we? We're going to give it a couple of weeks and then review whether this is working. So hopefully we get some good weather for PE lessons. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. Just brilliant weather for the next six good months. Weather. Yeah. Um, that's kind of all the, the main questions. Um, and, and I think that the important thing is that there's been lots of these sessions this week and parents have asked a range of questions. On the website, we've got a frequently asked questions bit, which I haven't put up to date for the last 10 days. I think there are more questions coming through, so I'll work on that over the weekend and look and see if we can put some more questions. No question is a silly question. No question is too big or too little. We need to know your questions and we will do our very best to answer them. Bottom line is we're really desperate for tomorrow morning, 8.25, see the children on the playground to get going on the curriculum to see how it works to see how our new timetable works, to see how we can um, do what we can to deliver the very best quality education. Meanwhile, in the background, there is always that nagging, what about Plan B, what if situation. We're doing lots of backup on that, looking at how we will we'll carry on teaching if we have to send some children home. I urge you to make sure that you feel comfortable that your child knows how to log on to their email, send attachments on their emails if they've done some work. They know how to log on to the different websites. You know how to log on to show my homework to check what's going on. And that we're all in a much stronger position than perhaps we were on the 20th of March when we were all thrown into a bit of an emergency. So I hope this has helped. I hope we've answered some of your questions. Please keep asking us questions. We are so looking forward now to tomorrow morning, 1,000 children in the school and it all going tickingly well. Thank you very much, parents. It's been lovely to be able to talk to you tonight. Thank you.